Hi, I'm Greg Endress. I work as an extension agronomist at the Carrington Research Extension Center. And I'm standing in our living weed exhibit at the center. It has about 60 live weeds that are available for viewing uh, any time. And the reason we had this display is because the first step in weed management is weed identification. Uh, today I'm going to talk about about half of the North Dakota noxious weeds that are on our list. Uh, there's several weeds that I will not talk about. Um, of the 13, they include Canada thistle, musk thistle, absinthe wormwood, leafy spurge, uh, purple loosestrife, and salt cedar. But we'll uh, talk briefly about the rest of these seven weeds, and uh, we'll be talking about their biology and primarily just some, some basic identification characteristics. If you want details about this weeds, we have a very nice guide to North Dakota noxious and troublesome weeds. And then also we do have the North Dakota Weed Control Guide to give you tools to help manage these difficult to control weeds. So let's begin. I'd like to start with the three knapweeds weeds in North Dakota. And the knapweeds weeds are our perennials, the Russian knapweed. weed, uh, which is here, is a long-lived perennial. The other two, the diffuse knapweed, the spotted knapweed, are, are short-lived uh, perennials, or sometimes even are biennials. With a na Russian knapweed, it has uh, a very extensive root system. The root system can reach down to 20 feet. And it also has a characteristic that helps distinguish it from the other two knapweeds. It has a, a blackened surface on the roots. So if a person pulls the plant out, you can see it has extensive root system, which is different than the other two knapweeds, plus that blackened approach to it. Um, on the top side of all three of these knapweeds, there's a fairly easy way to distinguish them, and that is looking at their bracts. The bracts are the, the structures that surround the flower of these, of these three knapweeds. And so essentially, uh, to distinguish the three of them, we need to wait until they, they flower to be sure that they're, they're one or the other. And with the, the Russian knapweed, it has kind of a paper-like tip to the bracts as compared to the others. With diffuse knapweed, we have uh, spines that, that uh, surround the tip of the brack, which distinguish it from the others. And then with spotted knapweed, as the name implies, uh, it has a, a blackened tip on the bracts. So the bracts are the key way to distinguish our three knapweeds. And all three of these are very difficult to control. Next, let's talk about uh, toad flax. There's actually two toad flax species that are on the North Dakota noxious weed list. The one we have on display today is yellow toad flax. And both yellow toad flax and Dalmatian toad flax are perennials. They uh, reproduce by the root system as well as by seed production. Uh, yellow toad flax, if you on a casual look of it, it looks like it's leafy spurge. But in closer inspection, you'll see that the leaves are, are narrower and longer. And a, a key way to identify it is that if you pull the leaves or break the stem, there will not be any milky sap that is seen as compared to leafy spurge. So how do we distinguish between yellow toad flax and Dalmatian? Well, Dalmatian toad flax has arrow-shaped leaves that wrap around the, a woody stem as compared to what we see in here with the, the yellow toad flax. More of a, a thin stem and, as I mentioned earlier, the leaves are long and narrow. Both of these two are, are long-lived perennials that are very difficult to control. They're in the snap dragon family and they're actually escaped ornamentals. And then we have two left that I want to talk about. And both of these are new entries, rel relatively new entries in our noxious weed list. Uh, the first is hound's tongue. Hound's tongue is a biennial and it spreads by seed. The first year of growth uh, looks like these plants here. Uh, the leaves can get to a length of six to eight inches and they have kind of a, a ovate shape to them. And the leaf surface is, 
uh, is full of hairs and is rough feeling. And that's uh, part of the reason that it was named Hound's Tongue. The second year of growth, the shoot will elongate. And about this time of year, the flowers will be present. And the flowers will produce three to four nutlets that are teardrop shaped, flat. And they have these spines or burrs on them that, that uh, easily can be transported uh, primarily by animals, uh, wildlife as well as man. So that is hound's tongue. And then the last one is Palmer amaranth. And of course we don't have that on display because it's our most feared pigweed of the many pigweeds that we have in North Dakota. Um, with Palmer amaranth, it most closely resembles water hemp and that both of these pigweeds will lack hairs. But to distinguish Palmer from water hemp, uh, the petioles are, are quite a bit longer. They they're typically are longer than the length of the leaves. And the petiole is the structure that, that connects the leaves to the stem. Um, Palmer amaranth is a very prolific uh, seed producer. And when the seed head emerges, it'll be very long. It'll be at least a foot long, and sometimes it can, they can grow to two to three feet in length. And so that's something different compared to the other pigweeds in North Dakota. Uh, palm rameth is what we call dioecious, so there's some male plants and female plants. And the male plants that, that are headed, the, the head is soft as compared to the female uh, palm rameth. When you, when you grab the head, it is bristly. In addition, the female uh, Palmer amaranth will have very sharp spikes in the leaf axle. So that's a really quick rundown of Palmer amaranth. We have a very nice guy that, that talks about our, our um, worst pigweeds in the state, how to identify them, as well as control measures. But at this point, we're trying to keep uh, Palmer amaranth eradicated for North Dakota.